Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a video about the Apple iPhone XS. Of course, this was announced last week, which unfortunately I couldn't cover at that time because I was preparing to evacuate for Hurricane Florence. Thankfully, I did not have to evacuate. Unfortunately, though, the hurricane did still affect many, many people. They're still affected right now, and my heart goes out to all of them. Uh, that aside, let's focus on the iPhone XS lineup. So uh, I want to keep emphasizing XS because even though I know it's the iPhone XS and it's, you know, the S is part of the lineage, these phones are incredibly expensive. And in my mind, XS is the perfect way of looking at it. Um, I don't think Apple meant for that to be ironic, but it absolutely is. Because if there was ever a way to do something in excess, it would hand over your money for either of these phones. So three phones were actually announced. Uh, we're on Apple's website, by the way, for those of you wondering. So we're getting this straight from the purveyor of your choice, or maybe not your choice. Now, those of you that follow my channel know that I don't cover Apple products generally. I do consider them a giant and respect completely what they've done for the industry, more so Steve Jobs, uh, whether he was a smug SOB or not. Uh, still, the game was changed and that deserves the utmost respect. But what we've got here are just the most expensive and unimproved revisions of the iPhone that I have seen in years. In fact, this goes back maybe four generations. And that's because, as you can see, we've got two different models here. Uh, the 5.8 inch base XS, which starts at a thousand US dollars, 64 gigs of storage. And then you've got the max. Yes, if you want to go excess to the max, then you're going to go with the six and a half inch display. Both of these are essentially the iPhone 10 with minor upgrades in the same way that the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 was very much a minor upgrade at face value over the Note 8. But in my opinion, the reason the Note 9 is my daily driver is because it was much more than an incremental update. But for Apple users, everything I've seen, read, studied, watched definitely points to that if you own an iPhone 10 right now, do not consider either one of these phones. This is an absolute money grab and you'll see why. So let's say we go with the XS. You pick your carrier, buy without. By the way, they've added a secondary SIM uh, slot now. Still no expandable storage, of course. Uh, still a lightning uh, port for charging. No USB Type-C. Come on, Apple. Uh, I hear the iPad's going to have Type-C. What's going on? Get with the club already. I know you're trying to squeeze every penny out of that lightning port, proprietary BS, but it's time to join the rest of the world so that we can all carry one charger. But... Anyway, I ramble. Let's go with any color. Doesn't make any difference. And there you have it. 64 gigs, 1,000 bucks. 256, 1150. And then for the half terabyte, 1350. I mean, absolutely insane. But important when you take into account that you cannot expand your storage. Don't forget that, okay? So this is not like the Galaxy Note 9 where you can throw a half terabyte SD card in there and be done. Now, if we look at I wanted to show you specs. I guess uh, it was there. Uh, maybe it wasn't. So let's say we go with the 512. And you're going to need to do some financing. I mean, that's the crazy part here uh, because that is how incredibly expensive they've become. Actually, I don't think I'm even getting it. Here's the what's in box. No headphone jack still. Um, what they've claimed to have done with the camera, by the way, being revolutionary, is not. I can tell you that uh, without any hesitation here. This is probably uh, the best way for me to go. But so here they're just giving us, you know, the color scheme. By the way, you still have the notch. So this image is incredibly misleading. It made me, when I first saw it, wonder, did Apple do away with the notch? But of course, that's not the case. Um, it's just they've used an image to kind of mask it uh, and, and make it look more attractive. And I'm, I hate the notch. I mean, let's just leave it where it is. The notch is inappropriate, in my opinion. Uh, it's acceptable on a phone like the OnePlus One Six, where you're getting incredible hardware for under 600 bucks. Uh, but none of the phones I'm talking about today approach 600. In fact, the phone for the masses from this lineup, the R, which I'll get to eventually, which may be the best seller or the worst seller, I don't know, because these phones are all such a gouge. 
uh, you know, essentially is bringing outside of its processor specs that are from five years ago at a starting point of 750 US dollars. That's your least expensive iPhone here in this lineup. That's why I'm saying if you've got the 10, keep it. Don't do anything. And if you don't have the 10, maybe get the 10. But to buy any of these would be insane, in my opinion. So, specs. I love how Apple puts this out in bold as if we're all blind. And that's fine because it's all about those retina displays, baby. So, 5.8 versus 6.5. They don't even give us resolution. Uh, but I know that the 6.5 is packing essentially the same resolution, roughly, as my Note 9. The difference is my Note 9 has the best display on the market. Apple is sourcing their OLED screen, screens from LG. I love LG. I've got a ton of LG OLED televisions in my home. But when it comes to smartphones, even LG doesn't really rock the OLED. So that tells you a lot about how Apple strong-armed this on this display deal. Now, of course, uh, the cameras, dual, this is not a new thing. Um, 12 megapixel on the rear, uh, 7 on the front. And they have been lying, as I've said, about the uh, capability, the aperture on the cameras um, and basically trying to fool people into believing that uh, they can achieve 1.4, uh, but they can't. So they're doing it with software and that's, it's just, they should say, we're doing it with software. We're not you know, using hardware and not pretend that they've achieved something that they haven't. Uh, they claim that the face ID Facial recognition is faster here, but no specific points as to how much faster. Now, you've got the A12 Bionic uh, processor in there, uh, six core, I believe. Again, they don't mention any of this because no Apple users really want to know specifications. They just want new Apple in hand. And that's exactly what they'll do if you're willing to give them all that money in hand uh, or, you know, give away your life with some financing. Now, Water resistance, exactly the same on both of the XS, XS models. Um, you know, two meters, 30 minutes, or the phone goes kaput, I assume. And then wireless charging. Oh, something they finally brought to last gen that's been around for six years. So that's definitely good. But you're still stuck with that lightning port. Uh, keep that in mind. Capacities I've gone over. The 512, they're sourcing from Samsung, of course, since that's Sammy's chip. And... Again, you just have crazy prices on the 64 and 256. Uh, here are the actual, more detailed uh, specifications. And uh, I said close. Actually, uh, you know, the phone I have, my Note 9, does have a higher resolution. So not only is it a superior Super AMOLED display, but also uh, higher resolution, higher PPI. Um, so Apple still can't claim to have the best display on the market, which, by the way, is a big deal if a phone is your daily driver. The first thing you're going to do is look at that screen. So that is critical, especially when you're laying down a thousand plus. And if you're laying down a thousand, you're not even getting, uh, you know, the resolution I'm talking about, meaning that's offered on the 6.5. You're getting a lower resolution, but nearly a wash there. It is a wash, excuse me, on the PPI. Uh, moving along, uh, in terms of the 3D touch, that is missing from the R. I don't know how much that'll matter to people. Uh, also, Apple has lied, well, not lied, but misrepresented. A lot of um, bloggers, journalists uh, reported that this phone has 120 hertz refresh rate on its display. It does not. That is for the digitizer. They had that on the iPhone 10 as well. So that is not a new feature. Do not be confused. Um, a friend of mine said, oh, it's got 120 hertz display. It, the, the iPhone 10 had the exact same thing. So this new XS feature is not there. Um, brightness, definitely a very bright phone. But again, you're not going to beat out the Note 9 screen. I'll repeat that until I am exhausted. Uh, in terms of height, weight, width, depth, I mean, these phones are not made out of uh, aluminum. That is the other key difference in terms of build quality between this price point, you know, with the XS phone as opposed to the XR. Um, I don't know what the R stands for, but we'll get there. We already went over the splash and dust res uh, resistance. Uh, the chip, I give credit. I mean, Apple continues to make their own processors, not do what every other carrier does 
on the market and just cop to Qualcomm's latest and greatest. Samsung does make their own chips in-house too, don't get me wrong, but um, as great as the A12 is, it's living in an iOS world and Apple really didn't brag that much about a giant, I think it was like a 15% performance leap. That's not much of a leap, so I'm not sure really what to say about it other than that they did shrink. Uh, You know, we got down, I think, to 7 nanometers. So, I mean, like, that's impressive that they've actually been able to take down the size uh, physically, but 15% performance gain, it sounds good, but... Uh, Again, synthetic benchmarks are Apple's favorite thing. So the dual 12 megapixel cameras, I did mention, you can capture 4K at 60 frames per second. That's definitely nice. Two times optical zoom on both uh, versions of the XS. You do not get that with the XR. I want to point that out. Nor do you get the AMOLED display. So it's not just the build material. You do get that same 812, uh, the 812 processor. So that's really the appeal with the XR. But we're still not there. Uh, other things uh, for you to be aware of, uh, smart HDR photos. I mean, video recording, I just mentioned uh, in terms of the 4K at 60p, I really think that's the biggest or the most important element there. The front-facing camera, 7 megapixels, um, the retina flash. Um, and wait, did I just gloss over the... Okay, yeah, so they're saying now on the aperture here, they say F1.8 and F2.4, uh, F2.4 of the telephoto, but in their keynote, they showed F1.4. So that, that's, I don't know if they've come clean or not, but just false advertising. I watched it, I saw it, it was bullshit. Um, other things to be aware of. Um, I'm looking, the dual SIMs I mentioned, that's huge for China, that's huge for India, and it's huge for Apple. If they want to make money and sell more phones, You've got to accommodate the markets that you're trying to sell the phones to, right? Uh, I mentioned the facial uh, recognition is supposed to have improved in speed, but they didn't give us any um, factor, so I don't know by how much. Um, call quality, not really interested. Um, it, it should be solid, right? Most expensive phone on earth. Now, this is cute. Check this out. So, when they go over their power and battery specs, God forbid they tell us how many milliamp hour. Uh, the, the actual physical size of the battery, the capacity, but it will last 30 minutes longer than the iPhone X. That's if you go with the regular in excess. If you go with the in excess to the max, then you're talking about an hour and a half longer than the iPhone 10. So uh, I don't know where they're pulling, like, I don't, is a child writing this? Or is this just an insult to all iPhone users? I'm not quite sure. Because when I see that that's the description, uh, I know Samsung said you'll get an hour more than the Note 8. Thankfully, it was a lot more than that. But they told us how big the battery is. What is the mystery here? Uh, Wireless charging. Mentioned that already. Congratulations. You see the difference in talk time, 20 versus 25. So basically, if you get the bigger screen, uh, obviously, they didn't give you a bigger battery. um, Or not not that much more of a battery. Um, Oddly enough, it... Maybe it is larger because they're saying it's an hour and a half. I, I don't know. It's a mystery, right, until we get that capacity. Um, because it is almost a wash in video playback and audio playback. And I don't know. So I don't know if any of these numbers are really accurate. Um, I guess I would have to have one in hand to see. Uh, but the fact that the specs are a mystery should be telling you everything you need to know about their profit motive. Uh, to me, I see this as being... Uh, a process of the iPhone 10 being a success. It was a gamble going over to an AMOLED display, changing that screen, them giving up that IPS from their cold, dead hands. That was serious business, man. Apple didn't want to spend any money on your display. You made them. Well, really, Samsung made them. And so they finally did it. You got wireless charging too, which was like, you know, peasants being thrown bread who were starving. It's like, what? I mean iPhone users didn't know this existed. And I mean the people that stick with Apple no matter what. And if it did exist, they came up with a reason to not like it without ever even having it. I mean, come on. Do what's in your own favor. It makes sense. Uh, The SIM card I already mentioned. um, (laughs) But I think you get the idea. I mean, it's just insane that they've 
they've basically now finally gotten the economics together for the iPhone 10. So on this cycle, they didn't want to bother having to reinvent anything or do anything innovative because now they've got economies of scale in favor of the design of the iPhone 10. So they're giving you the iPhone 10 with some minor improvements, the biggest one being the processor, but that even they're not bragging that much about. And then, you know, at the end of the day, I'm trying to get you back so you can see the price on the on the excess in excess maximum in excess because I didn't even get there because I just can't believe that they they want your children okay and by that I don't mean they want to take your kids I mean they they would have you deprive your children if you're that bad of a parent um, loading up slowly but surely looks like it's still trying to give me the well let's just see if maybe the option was here did I miss it? No, we're still in just, uh, here we go. Nope. This is where hopefully you would think Apple would let me change this. Yes. Check out the Max. I mean, I've been basically ranting just about how expensive the in excess base model is. Fifteen, fourteen fifty before tax. What the hell is going on? Buy a OnePlus One Six. Get the same specs. Pretty much. More RAM. And um, yeah, you won't have a, a status symbol if that's why you're buying this. And you'll be out, you know, under $700. Okay, so now let's talk about the budget phone. Now that we've gone over the, the pricey stuff, let's get to the real, the, the winner of this bunch, which if Apple was trying to make a phone for the masses, I just don't understand. I mean, in excess mini, in excess maximum, and now the R. Now, people I've, I've heard call it, stand, you know, come up with jokes. Is, is it for refurb? Is it, you know, they're trying, whatever they can. I'm going to go with something more along the lines of rubbish, even though that's not something often used here in the States. We all know it means garbage, a.k.a. shit. And I'm saying this because, all right, $750 base price for this. Okay, liquid retina. Okay, newsflash. You're getting a 720p IPS display. Welcome to 2012. In fact, in 2013, 2012, we already had 720p AMOLED displays on Samsung phones, like the Galaxy S3 that His Royal Highness D Donald Trump was using up until last year when he finally bought one of these pieces of crap, when he finally stepped into the world of Apple because someone told him that the iPhone is a status symbol and the president using an Android phone looks bad. Well, yeah, if you're using something unsecure, that's always going to look bad. But let's not make this about politics. Um, but he did rock an S3 up until last year. A Galaxy S3. Just remember that. If you like Trump, just remember that. Man would, would not upgrade his phone. But so just starting that, and Apple has the nerve to call this a liquid retina display. Well, it is an LCD panel, so it is liquid in that sense, but I don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Again, who writes this stuff? I mean, Steve Jobs is rolling in that grave. Now, the only thing that the R really has going for it is that it has the that A12 bionic, you know, super bionic chip. But beyond that, uh, it loses, it has the same, same sensor, same camera, but it loses the optical, uh, zoom. So that's one downgrade. Uh, otherwise, it's all about basically that you've lost the metal construction. You now have aluminum. Okay. 6.1 inch display. And essentially, they're claiming this has the longest battery life of all of the brand new iPhones. And they're giving you an example of the XR versus the 8 Plus to show, look at how much more real estate on the screen you're getting in the same form factor as the 8 Plus. Um, but I can tell you right now, $750 starting point for a 64 gig version of this phone, which is the entry level. You do get wireless charging, but you're, you're going so many steps backwards just to have a new phone. That's literally what this represents. Um, and that's why the A12 is the only thing it has going for it. There's nothing else. Okay, up to 50% performance, uh, faster graphics performance. Uh, 
you know, eight core neural engine. I mean, I got to tell you, this is all bullshit. The A12 is a legit chip. Don't get me wrong, but lipstick on a pig, this is, this doesn't even fit this category, what they've done. I mean, just starting with such a bad display for a phone and don't get me wrong, IPS panels can be great for color grading. They're fantastic, but in, you know, phones, how could you convince anyone that a 720p IPS display is worth 750 bucks? You can get a China phone with that display for $150 or $100. Uh, again, with the F18, it's not F. It's not F14, like they did in their keynote. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't stop. Again, you're getting the same sensor, you're getting the same camera, no optical zoom. That's so you do get the 4K at 60 frames. But you can get all of this for less money stepping away from the fruit company. So I can't really give this any kind of... If they were trying to make the affordable version, bring this in at 600 and you're going to get some people. But at this price, um, there's just no way. And it likely gets better battery life than all of the other brand new in excess phones simply because... Uh, it has less under the hood. I mean, yes, same processor, but smaller, you know, IPS display that I just feel like the, these are all recycled parts. I mean, the whole iPhone 10 in excess line, as I'm going to keep calling it, is a recycling factory. So let's go to some pricing. Just so you see it. And then I'll jump back to tech specs. And but I think it's a wrap because it's been long enough. So, all right, you get a lot more colors, did you notice? And that's because they think this is going to be their best seller, truthfully. Uh, they wouldn't, and why take the risk otherwise? Here, I can't get unlocked for some reason. Go with white, I went with black before. So there you go, 750 for 64 gigs of internal storage, 128 gigs at 800, and then 256 at 900. Remember, 720p IPS screen. I just, holy shit. I mean, talk about trying to print money. It's insane. I, I don't, only Apple. That's what I can tell you. Again, no headphone jack, no expandable storage. <laughs> you get the same processor. You get the same camera, less the optical zoom. Um, you get none of the same build materials, less waterproofing. Uh, this, I think, only can do one meter for 30 minutes, whereas the NXS lineup can do two meters for 30 minutes. So it's just not as well built. Inferior build materials. Um, it must be easier for them to make. Uh, and I think they've got incredible margins on all of this. I mean, all. Of, I mean, this is always. This is how Apple has been successful for years. Uh, so nothing surprising. So. All right, let's get to those tech specs. Are you ready now? Get ready. So that Liquid Retina HD, Liquid Retina, it's a whole 1792 by 828, 326 PPI. In other words, one of the worst screens ever for $750. I mean, I just don't know what's going on. The world is upside down. IP67 rating, the A12 I mentioned, same exact camera, 12 megapixel. You just don't have dual. So you don't have the wide angle going on. 4K at 60 frames. That's nice. I'm sure it's going to look good. Same 7 megapixel front facing. And how do I help people? How do I help you? Listen, if you already own, there's the design with that horrible notch, which I understand with the OnePlus One. It's a bargain, that phone. The OnePlus One 6 is an absolute marvel at its price point. I think 579 is the base model. And it's got superior specs to this phone. So uh, it's got su superior specs to the iPhone in excess. I mean, I know a lot of people who, w if Apple had brought it, they would have left Android for this uh, easily. But this is, in my opinion, probably the most disappointing uh, keynote and launch. I mean, to not go to Type-C, what? Again, the world is upside down. Everything uses Type-C. Come on. 
I know you want those patent royalties. You want, I mean, it's not patent royalties, but they want to make more money on what they invested in their patents. I stand corrected in my verbiage. But there you have it. I think I've kind of made it clear. You can go out tomorrow and God bless you if you want to buy the iPhone in excess, either in the 5.8 or the 6.5 inch flavor and get taken all the way to the house for the price of a real computer up to 1450 bucks. Of course, you can finance it. And maybe that's what this is all about, is that Apple is pricing this all so high because the margins are so fat and interest rates are going to go up before we see ourselves in a recession. So it's a great time to see if, you know, how many stupid people will pony up the money. Uh, that's all I see here, unfortunately. And um, that's why I highly recommend going with the iPhone 10. That kind of wraps things up. I would stay as far away from these phones, all three versions, as possible. Um, the upgrades aren't upgrades. And I don't know what else to say other than that Apple has put forward um, one of their least impressive keynotes in history. And if you're an Apple fan, you got to feel that way, man and woman. You got to see that they, they didn't have anything to brag about. There wasn't anything game-changing. And when I just read to you before, that oh, it'll get 30 minutes more battery life, then keep your iPhone 10. For sure, keep it. I mean, if you absolutely must have that 6.5-inch display, now you do have that option. But why wouldn't you be getting a Galaxy Note 9? 1000 bucks buys a lot more phone there with expandable storage. And then I'm not even getting into the iCloud, uh, which a friend of mine was talking to me about and how they're trying to rope people into that system, which you know mimics what Google uh, already has employed with the Pixel lineup of phones, backing up all of your images and videos for free, but Apple's going to charge you. Um, this is not a status symbol. And if it is a status symbol, and that's the world we live in now, then it's a status symbol that no one should be proud of. That's really where I wrap things up. I said I was wrapping it up early. Uh, er, but now it gets wrapped up. So, uh, again, do yourself a favor. Get, get your, the iPhone 10, the X, from last year if you're really looking for the latest and greatest from Apple uh, because you'll do so at a great discount. I can't even justify the R at $750 because it's too close to the in excess 5.8 inch model and then the six and a half inch model is just like wow just get a note nine you know i thought the note nine announcement was underwhelming but then i saw this crap and holy shit anyway end of the rant hope you enjoyed it went almost 30 minutes and um apple's gonna make a fortune of money on all this trash uh, so again if you're an iphone 10 user you don't need to make a charitable donation. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.